Welcome to Centre Church. We hope you enjoyed this message, recorded live from our Burgess Hill campus. Um, it is always a privilege and honour to share the Word of God, but above all, to come into the house of the Lord. I always look forward to Sunday, because when I come here on Sunday, whether I had things sitting on my mind, whether I had doubts, whether I had issues, there's kind of something that lifts when I come. And so, one thing that I know is there is power in fellowship. Fellowshipping together is brethren. But also, fellowshipping with the, with the Spirit of God. Fellowshipping with God. Bishop said, before we came in here, the Trinity was here. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They were here. And we walked into that presence. We came in that presence. And so, we come here. We worship with him. We fellowship with him. Our burdens are lifted. Our pain is eased. Our confusion receives clarity. How wonderful it is. And now, uh, before I get overexcited, we, we are in our, in our series, Unlocked. And this is what unlock, being unlocked looks like. It looks like being released. Let me, let me just flash back from last week before we start. Hannah shared a beautiful word last week. And uh, about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the challenges that they faced while they lived as uh, children of God who were living... As children of God living in Babylon, the, the dealings of Babylon were contrary to the will of God. But the boys stood their ground. And Hannah concluded her message by leading us to Acts chapter 1 where she said, um, for us to be able, for us to be able to stand boldly for what we believe, when what we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. She read Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in uh, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And one thing that uh, Hannah emphasized as she concluded her message, she said when life looks raw, when situations are so raw and so difficult to deal with, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to deal with those things and continue to walk in power. So I don't want to go anywhere further from there. I just want to start right from that scripture. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Um, the name of this series is Unlocked. It says Unlocked, Experiencing the Power of the Holy Spirit. Unlocked, Experiencing the Power of the Holy Spirit. Now the word unlock means uh, to release, to unleash, uh, to expose, to release, to... Uh, to, I would say to give freedom. What was locked away has now come to the open. What was inaccessible has become accessible. What was unreachable has become reachable. What was not manifesting, what could not be seen, has been exposed and can be seen. And so when I was looking at this, uh, the, at the top, at our series, the title of the series, I started to think, okay, there are some things that God has packaged in each and every one of us in form of gifts that God has packaged when he formed us in our mother's wombs. Before we knew it, God packaged a lot of gifts inside of us. And some of those gifts have been lying idle. They have been quietly sitting inside of us. So when God introduced us to this series and he said, Unlocked, what he is saying is in this season, in this very time, it is time to unlock and to unleash every gift that is locked inside somebody. Everybody has got something to do for the kingdom of God. Everybody has got a gift that profits someone. You see, Apostle Paul writing about spiritual gifts uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 7, he says, uh, these, give, these gifts are given to profit you. In other words, they are for our benefit. 
You are a prophet for our benefit. You are an intercessor for our benefit. You are a preacher for our benefit. You speak and pray in tongues, you interpret tongues for our benefit as the church, as families, and as individuals. So in this season, when, uh, when we are entering or starting this um, series that God is giving us in this season, unlocked, God is calling each and every one of us to present ourselves before him and allow him to start to penetrate, to unlock, and to unleash every gift, every ability, and every talent to start to come out for the benefit of the church. You see, Center Church is a gifted place. There are people in this place who are gifted. There are people here who are packaged with greatness. And sometimes we, don't, we might not know how come somebody is so gifted, but they don't, that that gift seems to be locked away and accessible, and no one is probably benefiting from that gift. One of the biggest problems is timidity. Most of the time, sometimes we actually know what God wants us to do, what God has packaged inside of us, but fear holds us back. That's one of the things. But the other thing as well could be, maybe we don't know the giver of the gifts, who is the Holy Spirit. You see, for you to open up yourself, to embrace and allow somebody to access your life, to speak into your life, to change things about your life, you have got to trust that person. You have got to know that person, trust that person, so that you can let them speak, do or, you know, do things through you and in you. And for that reason, that is why I just felt today, this is a day two of, of our series. I have entitled today's message, Knowing the Holy Spirit. Because I believe if we are to manifest in the power of the Holy Spirit, if we are to allow the Holy Spirit to use us for the benefit of the body of Christ, he's got to be a friend that we know. He's got to be a somebody whom we understand. He's got to be somebody whom we trust. You see, sometimes it's things that you hear as you grow up or, you know, along the places where we go, people say a lot of things. I have spoken to some people who are really scared uh, of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. They find it threatening. They find it uncomfortable. And the reason could be what they have been taught and what they have been told about the Holy Spirit is probably not the true representation of who the Holy Spirit is. Praise the Lord. Now, um, when we just flip back from the Old Testament, just give me, um, just allow me to just walk you through just a few things quickly. Uh, just to expose who the Holy Spirit is. When we uh, look at... Uh, the question, who is the Holy Spirit? A bishop was talking about uh, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, were present here. Uh, which make it clear that uh, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the, is the manifestation of God's power. Let me flash back to Genesis. When we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, this is right at the time of creation. At the time of creation, uh, that in verse 2, we hear that the earth was formless and void. And the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. And because the Spirit of God was present, in the time when the earth was formless, void, everything was looking chaotic. But I want us to understand the Holy Spirit was present right there. And it was in the presence of the Holy Spirit that God started to create and bring beauty out of chaotic situations. So when the Holy Spirit is present, chaos starts to change from being chaotic to order to beauty because the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is present. Now when you uh, fast forward to chapter 6 of Genesis, uh, when you read chapter 6 of Genesis narrates the story of Noah, the opening of that passage starts by saying, now the Lord, now God looked and said, my spirit will not strive with humans any longer. There has been a lot of ungodliness moving away from God. Sin was multiplying. In the middle, after God made things beautiful by his spirit, there has been ungodliness in between murders and stuff like that. Sin became rampant. When we got to chapter 6, 
uh, the sto before the narration of the story of Noah. We know the story of Noah, how the rains fell and destroyed the whole earth. And once again, there was waters all over. Remember, in verse 2, there was waters all over. There was chaos. The spirit was present. And God started the, the beautifying things in the presence of his spirit. In, chap in this chapter now, God says, my spirit cannot strive. With this sinful nature of humans, my spirit will not strive with humans anymore. In other words, there was an element of withdrawing the spirit from the sin. And what happens next, it started to rain. The story of Noah. The rain fell down. Everything was destroyed. And once again, we were back to square one when there is chaos and disorder. I am revealing the Holy Spirit as the spirit, the, the spirit of God, the spirit who manifests the purity and the beauty that comes from God. And when the spirit of God is withdrawn, when the spirit of God is absent, there is chaos, there is disorder, and there is a, a beauty can be turned into chaos in the absence of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I pray that we are moving together. Fast forward again still in the Old Testament. When you start to see, you realize that the use of the word, uh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the power of God, the manifestations of God. You see, those words are, are used synonymously. They are used interchangeably. So when we talk about the presence of God, we are, we are talking of the power of God. We are talking of the Spirit of God. We are talking about uh, the Holy Spirit. And now, uh, fast forward, we have been uh, studying Ezekiel. One thing that sticks out about the Holy Spirit in the prophecies in Ezekiel, you see that uh, the people of God, God has got a big heart for his people. He's constantly forgiving, and he's constantly extending grace. But people continue to operate uh, uh, outside of the will of God. Now, when we look at the Israelites, the story um, of the Israelites, how they ended up, in bondage in Babylon. What happened is the presence of God has been present on the temple where the people would be worshipping. God was present with his people. His spirit was present. But as people continued to operate against God and to worship other gods and to uh, practice idolatry, what happened is um, uh, Ezekiel saw the uh, vision of how the presence of God lifted from the temple and left the city and departed out of the city. Now we have got a temple where people have been worshipping, where Israel has been flourishing, where the uh, presence of God has been uh, uh, tangible as they uh, excel in their lives and their families as they expand. But at this point when the presence of God who is the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God, lifted from the temple and left the city. What followed was disaster. The temple was the temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was destroyed. The people were taken out of Jerusalem into captivity. And that is what happens when the Holy Spirit has been moved out of places. It is the, the Holy Spirit is the power of God who holds things together in their beauty. The Holy Spirit is the power of God who brings healing and sustenance. The Holy Spirit is the one who continues to release goodness, beauty, even in chaotic situations. And when the Holy Spirit is resisted, moved to the side, chaos breaks loose in places. So when we are talking about knowing the Holy Spirit, is about knowing the manifestations of God, the protective hand of God, the hand of provision, the hand of sustenance, the hand of power. When that hand is lifted, chaos breaks loose, no matter where, uh, where we are. We can continue to see a lot of, uh, of those things when we, when we move over to the New Testament. Right at the beginning of the New Testament, the, the, the Holy Spirit is introduced again. Uh, an angel visits a uh, Virgin Mary and told Mary, you will have a, 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 a child. You know, we know all the story about uh, Mary will have, a, will have a child. And Mary is like, how is that possible? And he is told, and Mary is told, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. 
and you will give birth to a, a child, a son. You will call him Emmanuel, God among us. God is with us. So we see the Holy Spirit at work right at the beginning of the New Testament. With the introduction of uh, uh, Jesus, uh, we see the Holy Spirit. In the life of Jesus, uh, we see the Holy Spirit at work. Uh, the Bible says when Jesus was baptized, uh, heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came upon him and said, this is my own dear son, uh, whom I am well pleased. So when we trace the uh, from the Old Testament, I have to, to move these things, to squash things that need like probably the whole day of explaining into five minutes. But what we, can, what we can see clearly is that we can conclude that the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of God's power. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is, um, uh, because the Holy Spirit carries every, uh, every, uh, every, uh, every manifestation of who God is, uh, or, you know, ev every essence of God, he is present everywhere. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. The word of when we look uh, on Psalm 139, verse 7, the psalmist says, uh, where can I go from your presence? Where can I go away from your spirit? When I go down, you are there. Up, you are there. He is talking to God, but to the Holy Spirit as one which tells us the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the power of God. And uh, uh, one thing as well to note, you know, because the Holy Spirit sometimes when, they, when we read stories or encounters that have happened, we talk of the, uh, the Holy Spirit as uh, the oil, you know, and sometimes the dove, we hear the story of Christ, it talks about the dove, the Holy Spirit coming like a dove, sometimes as a, as a wind, sometimes as water. So sometimes when people are thinking of the Holy Spirit, they think of him as an object because they've heard the Holy Spirit connected to oil. They've heard the Holy Spirit connected to water. The Holy Spirit connected to wind. But I want us to understand the Holy Spirit is not an object. The Holy Spirit has got a personality. We, 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 we read a lot where we are told uh, the, the Holy Spirit, this grieved the Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Spirit, uh, Apostle Paul writes a lot to say the Holy Spirit was happy when we, or I was told by the Holy Spirit to do these things. So we are saying the Holy Spirit is not an object. And sometimes people say it referring to the Holy Spirit. It's because people are looking and thinking he is an object. But the Holy Spirit is God. He is a person, a, a manifestation of the personality of God. So when we look at the Holy Spirit, he's a friend. And I call him he, and I call him him. Why? Because he's a friend. I can talk to him. You can converse with the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes that becomes an obstacle. When, when, when you are thinking Holy Spirit and you are thinking oil, even when you want to talk to him, it doesn't make sense. Who talks to oil? But when we realize he's got a personality, he, he gets angry, he gets emotional, he gets excited. So we can talk to him. He, he, you can literally be walking around. And, and you are never on your own. That's one thing. You are never on your own because when we became Christians, when we gave our lives to Christ, Jesus came and dwelt in our hearts in the person of the Holy Spirit. So whether you are on your own in the middle of the night, you can start a conversation, Holy Spirit, how did you hear that thing that happened? That's really stressing me. I don't even know how to handle myself around this. You are having a conversation and you listen. He speaks back. He speaks. He reveals. Praise the Lord. So I am saying sometimes uh, we have blocked. Uh, uh, we, it has been almost impossible to be unlocked and allowing those gifts of the Holy Spirit to flow out of us because maybe we have doubted who this Holy Spirit is. We have feared his manifestations. You see, God just manifests in any, any way he wants. I have seen some things, the weirdest things happen when people were under the power of the Holy Spirit. It does not, we don't lose our minds 
but we just get excited into it. I have seen people roll on the floor. I have seen people cry. Some people become emotional. Some people become quiet. Some people roll on the floor. Others scream. Whatever manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It's nothing to be scared of because the Holy Spirit is God manifesting. Is God expressing himself. And because, you know, God, because we are all diverse kinds of people with different personalities, how we respond to the manifestation of the Holy Spirit differs from people to people. Some people, they just sit down and they weep. And you are wondering what's happening. The power of God is working inside them. Some people get too excited and they jump and they dance and you think, are they crazy? It's their personality, but God is working through them. You see, God works with us. He doesn't change us to be something else. You still remain yourself with your personality being shaped into the image of Christ. But when God manifests, he manifests in ways that you understand. What you call excitement, when you are excited in the spirit, you manifest in that way, and it all glorifies God. Praise the Lord. I know some people have heard the Holy Spirit was at work, and there was too much noise, there was screaming, there was some things they called chaos. They decided to just withdraw and say, mm -mm, me, I just want nice, tidy little things. But do you know what? When we want to see the spirit of God at work, to be unlocked, we have got to be befriending the Holy Spirit and allowing him to speak and to work through us. So I was just, uh, uh, yeah, I was just saying the Holy Spirit is God, is the manifestation of uh, God's power. We can relate to him. We can talk to him, you know, in, in everything. You can literally ask the Holy Spirit and he responds. And you, as, we, as we grow in uh, conversing with the Holy Spirit and speaking with the Holy Spirit, you get used to his voice. You get used to him when he speaks. You become able to separate your own feelings from the voice of the Holy Spirit. But that happens when we allow the Lord to work with us and we allow our hearts to open to him. Praise the Lord. So I have uh, literally answered who is the Holy Spirit uh, right there. Who is the Holy Spirit? And probably the other part we, want, we might want to... Uh, <laughs> I'm running out of time. <laughs> the other part we might want to, uh, to look at, which I think is important when we are talking about um, uh, knowing the Holy Spirit. is uh, And so why the Holy Spirit? Why do we need him? This one I'm going to just run fast. The first thing is uh, he is life-giving. We were talking in the beginning, how in the beginning there was chaos, disorder. Everything was, uh, you know, everything was out of shape. It was in the presence of the Holy Spirit that order was restored. So, and when, you re when we read Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 11, it talks about how, uh, how, how the, the, same spirit, the, the Holy Spirit quickened and brought Christ from the dead. And that same Holy Spirit dwells in us, quickens us, and gives us life. So when you talk about the Holy Spirit giving us life, I am thinking there are moments in my life where I felt lost, where I felt drained, where I felt like I don't know where to go from here. And when I remember that the Holy Spirit is life-giving, he gives life to somebody who is lost, right? Even from the time we know Christ. We are lost, we are in darkness. We are confused. Maybe we are, we are taken by uh, all kinds of addictions and stuff that are sitting on us. But when we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us life. He quickens us. He brings us to life in the same way that he resurrected Christ and, keep, and bring him and brought him back to life. So even in our chaotic life, in our confusion, stressed, you know, like uh, when you are in a point where you feel like, I don't even know where to go from now. My life is co a complete mess. The Holy Spirit is the one to talk to because he is life-giving. He quickens you. He brings order out of a life that looks chaotic. A life that looks like this one is destroyed, is gone, is uh, heading towards death. When the Holy Spirit turns to that sin, he turns that chaos, brings beauty and order. So he is life-giving to us as individuals, to our families, even collectively as the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is life-giving. 
The second thing, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, brings transformation. You know, the, 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 the word of God tells us about when you read Galatians chapter 5, 22, and it talks about the, um, about the fruit of the Spirit. And then it says, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, let me just read that quickly. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. There is no law. You don't go to prison because you are not patient. You don't go to prison because you are not loving as long as you don't manifest those in other horrible ways. But because we are people of the Spirit, we are transformed by the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit who brings that transformation. You can be a person who is very unforgiving. A person who is very hateful. A person who, who is very impatient about anything. But the, when we talk about the Holy Spirit as the spirit that brings transformation. When we, are, when we embrace him and allow him to work in our life. He is the one who starts to do the decluttering and the cleaning job. He cleans us up. I have heard some people who say, ah, me, I am a very bad person. I cannot go to church. I'm like, do you know what? You need Christ. Once you have Christ, the mess will be cleared by the Spirit who brings transformation, the Holy Spirit. He cleans us up. He is the one who, who, who makes our hearts tender towards the Word of God. It, the Holy Spirit makes our hearts hunger. For the word of God. He's the one who does the transformation. You know, sometimes we can struggle. You know what somebody did for me? I wish I could forgive them. Uh, just ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And the Holy Spirit will do the transformation job. In other words, it's the Holy Spirit who translates our lives to reflect the beauty of Christ. To reflect the character of Christ. It is the work of the Holy Spirit working inside of us. John chapter 14 talks of the Holy Spirit and called him somebody who walks by our side, our advocate, our helper, our comforter. So all we need as believers is the Holy Spirit at work inside of us. He transforms us. He strengthens us. He teaches us. He directs us. John 14 also talks about how the Holy Spirit reminds us of everything that Jesus has taught us. You know, sometimes when you are going through tough times, even the word of God disappears from your heart. You are thinking like everything is gone, but guess who quickens the word? It's the Holy Spirit. He reminds you on how to deal with certain situations. He reminds you of the teachings of Christ. He reminds you of the very word that you need for a situation that you are facing. What a friend we have. What a friend we have. And you know what? God is so willing to give us the Holy Spirit. And he gives without measure. So I have said the Holy Spirit is life-giving. And therefore, we like him. We love him. Because there's a lot in our life that looks dead. Well, at least in my life. But I thank the Holy Spirit because he brings life all the time in those things when they start to want to come up. And then we said he is the one who brings transformation. He's the one who cleanses us and enables us to be people who look like Christ. Loving, gentle, patient, like Christ. And we did, uh, and then the next uh, thing, which I'm going to make the final because of time, or probably two, is the spirit of revelation. We talk about, uh, you know, the, the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. No one knows the heart of man except the man himself. And likewise, no one knows the heart of God. No one knows the mind of God except for the Spirit of God. You want to know what God is thinking? Relate with the Holy Spirit. You want to know what God is planning? Talk to the Holy Spirit. You want to know what's coming and the situations that you might be facing? Ask the Holy Spirit. He knows the mind of God. This is what this uh, scripture says here. He knows and he reveals Romans 8, we are told that sometimes we don't even know how we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit intercedes with the groanings that we cannot utter. So what does that tell me? There are some situations that could be coming against me. I'm unaware of them. But the Holy Spirit of God quickens and brings that to my awareness. 
so that I know exactly where to shoot when I am lifting a prayer. I know exactly what I am working up against is the Holy Spirit of God who brings uh, those, uh, uh, those kinds of revelations. And you know what? He also exposes the plans of the enemy. It's the Holy Spirit who exposes. The Bible says when the enemy comes up like a flood, the Holy Spirit raises the standard. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God, he knows and he sees, he exposes the things of the enemy. I know I'm running out of time, but I think I should share this testimony. You know, when I was expecting Tadiwa, when I was expecting Tadiwa several times, I was threatened like in my dreams that Tadiwa would die as a toddler. And I was told exactly the disease that would afflict him and that he would die as a toddler. I think three times I had that dream. And so during my pregnancy, I was praying for that baby. I was speaking against that disease. I was uprooting. I was declaring that he will live to declare the goodness of God. Fast forward a few months forward, Tadiwa is born. Tadiwa is one and a half years. Problems started to happen. And the GP uh, told me Tadiwa had that particular disease that I had dreamt of. You can imagine what, what happened to me. I was scared to start, but I remembered the Holy Spirit, the spirit of revelation, who exposes the works of the enemy, was already exposed. He was already exposed, so I picked myself up, and I started to pray, and I spoke to that toddler. I was given medication. I am not suggesting that we stop taking our medications. That's not what I'm saying. But on this particular occasion, because the, the Holy Spirit had revealed, and I knew that if I just embrace this situation as it is, the conclusion was he was going to die. And so I took away all the medication and put it away and started to speak to the toddler. Day and night I spoke to him. I commanded the disease, the petitions, everything to come back to life in the name of Jesus. Fast forward, 16 years later, he is here. What am I saying? I am saying the Holy Spirit is the spirit of revelation. When we are interacting with him, he reveals not only the heart of God, but also the plans and the schemes of the enemy that are set to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And finally, the one I talk about all the time, he is the spirit who empowers us. He empowers us to stand boldly. He empowers us to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. He empowers us uh, to prophesy. He empowers us to pray. He gives us wisdom. He gives us uh, 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 knowledge of things that are hidden. The scripture that we read earlier on, you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Unlocked is the, is the, is the title of this series unlocked. This is the Holy Spirit. When we open our hearts and we allow God to penetrate, to open us up. I think in this season, let it be our prayer. Father, open me up. Whatever was holding me back, was it because I don't know who the Holy Spirit is about? Is it because I am scared? What is it in this season? It's time that we allow the word of God to speak to us, to penetrate, and to open those gifts. Let prophets start to prophesy. Let intercessors start to pray. Let those who carry the word of wisdom flow in the word of wisdom. Let those who have the gift of the word of knowledge, uh, let them flow in that word of knowledge. For what reason? For us to profit, for us to benefit from that gift. And one caution that Apostle Paul would always give, he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there are certain ways of doing things that stops the Holy Spirit from manifesting. Or the Holy Spirit is present and moving. But there are certain ways. There could be certain habits. There could be certain characteristics, certain approaches that kind of silence the move of the Holy Spirit when he is working among us. So Apostle Paul says that, do not quench the Holy Spirit. He says that uh, to the church at uh, Thessalonica. Quenching is to put off the fire. The fire of God is always burning inside of us. 
but there are certain approaches or ways to deal with the word of God. It could be resisting the word of God. It could be resisting the transformation that the Holy Spirit brings. And in doing that, we resist the full manifestation of the Spirit of God. So in this season of unlocking, one thing we've got to be collectively uh, watching against is the habit or the attitude of quenching the Holy Spirit, putting off the Holy Spirit, silencing the Holy Spirit, probably in an attempt to just, uh, uh, sometimes it's in an attempt to do what is comfortable or what we are used to and not allow the Holy Spirit to move and manifest as he desires. So one caution, do not quench the Holy Spirit. The other one is uh, do not resist the, the Holy Spirit. To resist is to work against. The Holy Spirit is going this way, and you are pushing that way, or we are pushing the other way. He says don't resist. When he starts to move, let him move. When he starts to speak, let him speak. Don't silence him. When he starts to manifest, let him manifest. Don't stop him. Why? Because God is always willing to move, to manifest and do things. But he does not force us. When we resist him, then his move stops. But in this season of unlocking, collectively, individually, maybe in our own private prayer times, and also collectively as we come together as a church, it's a, it's a challenge that uh, God is just throwing to us. That sometimes we kind of uh, bring down some barriers maybe, that we have uh, put, you know, it, all things, me included, there are certain things that just blocks, quenches the move of the Spirit of God. But just opening our hearts and say, Father, unlock me. I am ready for whatever you want to do in this season. We are ready even collectively for what you want to do. As families, even in our own homes, to say, Holy Spirit, we are ready. Move in this home. Let the manifestations of the Spirit start right in the grassroots. Let it start in our own homes. And when we come here, it's like a bonfire when all those fires are coming together. And last, the last thing, be, before I sit down, the, the, uh, the unquenching or the unlock, I mean the unlocking, the release and the move in the power of the Holy Spirit happens in the place of prayer. When, the, when, a, pro, when a prophetic come, word comes and says, uh, God is getting ready to unlock you or God is getting ready to move in this place, our response is more prayer. Our response is not to wait and see. You know what will happen with that prophetic word? Our response is increased prayer. Because it is in the place of prayer that the dead things are awakened. It is in the place of prayer that um, our, our distressed hearts are awakened. It's in that place where chaos is brought to order. Ha, there is our friend, the Holy Spirit. What can we do without him? Thank you for listening to this week's message. For any more information or to find out more of what we do as a church, you can contact us at info at centrechurch.uk or check out our website at www.centrechurch.uk.